Welcome, and thank you everyone for coming to see us today. Uh, my name is Kellen O'Keefe. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer of Flower One. Uh, we are currently the largest cultivator, manufacturer, and full-service brand fulfillment partner in the state of Nevada. Uh, what you saw there in that video uh, was our flagship 400,000 square foot greenhouse, which I believe is among the most state-of-the-art and highest producing facilities in North America. Uh, about less than uh, 18 months ago, that facility was a cucumber facility uh, producing mini cucumbers for Costco in North Las Vegas. Uh, in what I believe is a record period of time, we have converted that facility into what you see today that is now producing somewhere between three and 5,000 pounds of premium quality cannabis at the lowest possible cost of production uh, or the lowest recorded cost of production in the industry. Uh, we are, to take a step back and give you a little bit of the history of Flower One, you'd have to go back almost 25 years to when two brothers started their first commercial farm or greenhouse on their family farm. Uh, they have since gone on to become one of the largest agriculture producers in the state of, I'm sorry, in Western Canada and the Western United States. Uh, it's that team and that operational excellence in greenhouse that is what made Flower One possible and actually leads the, the design and management of the greenhouse that you see there today. I don't know about you guys, but that's about as much cannabis as I've seen in one photo. Uh, and uh, again, what you'll look at as you look at a photo like this is the, the consistency, the quality, the scale, um, all should give you an idea of, of what really differentiates Flower One from, from everybody else. As I mentioned, this facility was completed in less than 12 months. Uh, in cannabis industry, we've seen a lot of developments take a lot more time than anticipated. Uh, in our situation, we were actually lucky enough to have a team that was able to put together this greenhouse and turn it into a cannabis facility um, in, in a period of time that is, uh, again, truly remarkable uh, for inside the, you know, for, for cannabis or really for any, any greenhouse con uh, conversion whatsoever. The one thing I want to talk a little bit about is, is trust in cannabis. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, the supply chain in cannabis, and we, oftentimes when we refer to the supply chain, we refer to it being broken. I believe both consumers, brands, and retailers fail, do not trust where their cannabis comes from. You know, our goal is to change that and to provide both brands and retailers with a solution that allows them to scale their brands uh, and do so efficiently. Our goal is to provide the highest quality cannabis through sustainable and responsible cultivation and manufacturing. We believe in a world where consumers know and trust where cannabis comes from, and we believe that brands deserve the right supply chain partners and manufacturing partners to bring their visions to life. And we're here to serve those brands and retailers alike. Unlike other businesses, you'll hear a lot about vertical integration. Our goal is not to be vertically integrated. Our goal is to provide people with a true seed to shelf solution. So we will not compete with the retailers, but we'll rather be the dispensary's dispensary, providing both the, the dispensaries with the opportunity to buy all of the branded products that they desire and the top brands in the industry, as well as providing them with their white label or wholesale needs to bring their generic or house brands to market. This gives us an incredible opportunity to really build an ecosystem and serve the dispensary and become their partner. We can help them capture margin that they're unable to capture through their own cultivation and production, as well as bring brands to life that we believe represent some of the best brands in cannabis. Those brands not only stand for something, but they also collect the highest possible margin in cannabis for, for the products that they represent. So whether that be flower in its flower form through the best genetics, whether that be, uh, you know, uh, edibles such as Kiva, where you're having, you know, mints, gummies, chocolates, um, microdose that capture a significant premium comparatively to their counterparts, um, or the, the leading vape pens. We're bringing the top demanded brands from California and successful cannabis markets into Las Vegas and Nevada, and hopefully soon back into California as well. This is a little peek at a timeline, again, just highlighting how incredible the accomplishment was to take this greenhouse to where we are today. As you'll see, um, we just recently were licensed to sell cannabis out of the greenhouse in September. Since doing so, we've actually produced the number one flower brand in the state. So Old Pal, uh, an 
also the number one flower brand here in the state of California, is now the number one flower brand in the state of Nevada, according to the Data Analytics platform, Headset. We've also just recently completed the construction of our lab. This lab will allow us to convert uh, all of our cannabis into uh, not only distillate that we can sell into the wholesale market, but also distillate that we can convert into a variety of finished packaged goods that will service all of these brands and retailers that I've mentioned. <clears throat> taking a little bit at our, uh, taking a little quick look at our snapshot here in Las Vegas, uh, we have the 400,000 square foot greenhouse that I mentioned. Uh, again, the largest greenhouse in the state of Nevada, uh, and again, by far and away, the largest uh, cannabis producer in the state. We have a 55,000 square foot state of the art production lab that is attached to this facility that gives us the ability to do a variety of different extraction methods, ranging from ethanol, butane, CO2. Uh, and even experimental uh, new solventless forms and other, other extraction methods. Uh, in addition to that property, we have a, an additional site not attached to the greenhouse. This was the site of NLVO. It was an acquisition that we made as Flower One was entering the Nevada market. It was a 25,000 square foot indoor cultivation facility as well as a small manufacturing space. We are in the process of converting that space into a somewhere between most likely a 50 and 60,000 square foot state-of-the-art commercial kitchen. That commercial kitchen will be home to some of the most successful edible brands in the space, um, and we're really thrilled to bring that to market. We've got the benefit of having partners like Treehouse, uh, our real estate investment trust, that has allowed us uh, to do that expansion and make those improvements in a way that's non-dilutive to our shareholders. Talking a little bit for a moment about how Flower One takes a look at markets and what starts to differentiate us between other cannabis companies. First and foremost, Flower One made a commitment from the beginning to be highly focused and focused on a single state like Nevada. Nevada was an, in, an incredible market, not only for the market conditions that I'll get into in a second and the size of the addressable market, um, but we take a look at things that I think other cannabis operators, due to the, maybe the necessities in the early days or their desire to you know, grab as many sites as possible, they often were not able to look deeply into uh, certain conditions that will make or break uh, a cultivation site. Uh, things like power, tax rates, uh, the climate, uh, the microclimate, uh, the competitive landscape, the access to skilled labor force. Uh, all of these things are extremely important and can make a difference between a greenhouse being profitable or not. So well, everybody asks, why Nevada? Why Nevada? Well, there's a couple reasons why Nevada. One, I think Nevada is probably the most attractive, uh, is one of the most attractive, if not the most attractive cannabis market in the United States. If you look at the size of the addressable market, it's projected to have over $8 billion in sales by 2030. In addition to having an incredible, a great sized market, what you also have in Nevada is a very limited number of licenses. There are only 62 dispensaries today, converting into 125 soon, uh, but in total, you've got less than 400 licenses to service a very large market. There are no other commercial greenhouses uh, or, or competitors um, for what we essentially do in Nevada. I also believe Nevada is a very important market to build brands. And one of the things that we're doing at Flower One is marrying our low-cost production with the best brands in cannabis. This partnership will allow us to move from being a cultivator and a wholesaler into what I believe to be, soon to be, the largest manufacturer of cannabis products in America. We've got some of the best brands in the world uh, that are not only going to come with us from Nevada, but hopefully come back into California with us as well. You guys probably heard recently that we've made a decision to announce our expansion into California. California is, of course, the largest cannabis market in the world, and um, we believe the most important relative to building brands, and also happens to be probably the best place to grow plants in, in the world as well. Uh, the central coast of California uh, is home to uh, a number of different farms, ranging from you know, berries to tomatoes, to keep, almost everything grows in the central coast of California, and I believe it's going to be a, a key place for cannabis cultivation, uh, outdoor cannabis cultivation as well. We're looking to build uh, two things in California. We'll have a high-tech greenhouse that will give us the ability to produce the highest quality possible, the highest product possible, a quality that will actually replicate or replace indoor. So we're talking about 
the top of, can of quality relative to cannabis at the lowest possible cost for production. In addition to that, California presents an incredible opportunity to utilize outdoor cultivation to uh, effectively create the lowest possible cost of production uh, for biomass, uh, as well as potentially low, lower end brands or, or value brands that would be selling outdoor cannabis. So this, this collectively together between our greenhouse facility and our potential outdoor farms, we hope to be able to service the entire market and bring all of our brand portfolio from Nevada, uh, in addition to new partners in California, online. As I mentioned before, uh, the success of the greenhouse, I think, even took us a little bit by surprise. Uh, we had an, originally anticipated that we would have to kill a number of plants or that there would be die-offs. Uh, in fact, we have had more success uh, and less die-offs than I think anybody in, in the history of cannabis. Uh, we expected to lose thousands of plants and we lost only a handful of plants. Uh, and as a result, uh, we have uh, increased our production by I believe almost over 85% compared to our initial design capacity. Uh, and again, the most impressive thing here that we're really, really proud of is our cost of production. This 45 cents cost per gram is the lowest reported cost in North America by any public company as of September of 2019. Uh, in addition, it's not just about volume. I want to be clear, we talk a little bit about strains or as I've been more properly educated, cultivars. But these, uh, this genetics and the genetics that we're bringing into the facility, we, we look to bring in the best in the world so that we can provide all of our brand partners and retailers with the best possible product. That's really important to us as again, we're not looking to just be a volume producer, but we want to produce quality and offer variety to our brands and retailers alike. Um, you know, our extraction capabilities, uh, really proud of the team that we've built at Flower One. In addition to the greenhouse talent and the operational excellence that we've pulled from, from the agriculture space, we've got an incredible team of scientists uh, and engineers that are working to scale the lab and take it to a place that even our brand partners probably never imagined. We've been able to create efficiencies that are unique. We're able to uh, provide you know, manufacturing support on all of the different brand rollouts that we're, we're bringing into Nevada. And I think it's going to be uh, really, as we've, as we've seen with our early brand partners, uh, we've had great success bringing brands into the market and we're excited to bring some of the best brands in the world back in, into Nevada as well. Uh, one of the things that's ex uh, unique about um, another unique asset to, to Flower One is our relationship with the Dennis Group. The Dennis Group is one of the largest food and beverage design and build firms in the country. They build facilities for Kraft Foods, Procter & Gamble, Diageo. Um, so again, this level of, of professionalism and expertise is something that we're proud to partner with and we're proud to also have an exclusive with that group for cannabis for North America. <clears throat> Due to the regulations in Nevada, we, and uh, we are actually responsible for everything from the seed to the shelf. So sales and marketing efforts are part of the Flower One offering as well. So we provide a full turnkey solution for our brand partners entering the state. We're able to utilize the sales relationships, just-in-time delivery uh, experience that we have from agriculture, and we've combined that with some of the best sales talent from cannabis to build a true sales force in Nevada that we're extremely proud of and that I believe will soon take Flower One to a leading market share position. So we, we talked a little bit about uh, our, pro our production and how that translates into our relationships with brands. And of course, I'm sure many of you are wondering, well, how does that actually work? Where, where, you know, how, how are you guys compensating brands for this? So we work on a, a royalty or a licensing fee. And we're not just making this up at random, and we're not making it a flat or fixed rate. Uh, we're working with brands to determine what, level, what margin they're able to capture and then pricing their royalty rate accordingly. So this, is, this gives us an opportunity to work with brands that are charging a premium uh, and, and significantly more for their products, as well as offering the cheapest product in the state in every category as well. And that's something that we plan to do to make sure that we have a fully robust offering so we can go to a dispensary partner or a delivery partner and we can provide them with effectively everything they would need to fill their full menu or shelf. 
So talk a little bit about brands and who and why. Um, you know, some of these brands here you'll see today, uh, very, very proud to call our partners. Uh, you know, I believe that uh, one of the biggest misconceptions in cannabis is that there are no cannabis brands. I think that's something that people outside of cannabis markets often talk about. Um, and just because those cannabis brands have yet to penetrate, let's call it the nation. But when you go inside of cannabis markets, you actually see that there are established brand players that have built brands and have built brand loyalty. And that's something that we take a really close look at. Brands need to mean something, they need to stand for something, and then of course, we also look to have complete partners on the other side of the table. So we're looking for brands that are well capitalized, professional, compliant, uh, and on the cutting edge of their relative fields. So I think with that, guys, I'd love to open it up for questions. Uh, you know, I think we've, uh, you know, Right now, we're at an incredible inflection point for, uh, for Flower One, where we're looking to bring this greenhouse to life, bring all of these new exciting brands to Nevada, and get ready to uh, announce our sites in California and our expansion into new markets. So this is a, a very exciting time, and I'm, I'm happy to be here with you guys, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to be here. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Sure. I'd like to think so, and I do believe that you know price compression in cannabis is real. Um, you know, we can argue about whether or not it's a commodity and, and how long it'll take to you know to reach the bottom. But I believe that uh, it's not just about price, but it's also about quality. So what I think is really important for us is we believe the greenhouse and the high-tech greenhouse, where you have a completely controlled environment, will actually replace indoor flower, and that we will be able to produce flower that is indistinguishable, if not superior to indoor flower in a very short period of time. Um, that is not only something that's great due to the efficiencies we're able to capture, but I also believe that that's better for the planet. The carbon footprint of, of our facility comparatively to that of indoor is obviously much, much lower, and I think that that's something our industry needs to also take a close look at. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, in our California facility, we have a lot greater solar plans than we do in our Nevada facility. Uh, we do have solar going into Nevada in certain places, um, but it's, again, we're, we're more space constrained in Nevada, which makes it challenging. But in California, we plan to, uh, to use quite a bit of solar, and, uh, you know, ultimately that could end up covering a good portion of our energy consumption. Uh, you know, due to the way that we look at efficiencies, everything from water use to chemical use to fertilizer use to um, uh, you know, all of it is effectively taken into the way that we operate the facility, and those maximizing for efficiencies, um, you know, oftentimes results in, in a much lower carbon footprint. Anybody else? Sure. Healthy plants. Uh, that's the reality, right? I mean, you know, I think even, uh, you know, given our team's uh, expertise in agriculture, they were still coming into cannabis, or many of the team were coming into cannabis for the first time. So I think, you know, not only were they doing that, but they were doing that in a greenhouse in Nevada, right, where you have unique temperature conditions and challenges. So I think the expectation was that there were going to be failure rates all along the way, um, and in fact, uh, we just didn't see that happen, and the team did a really incredible job. We ended up in a, in a situation where we actually didn't have enough drying space for all of the cannabis that we were pulling down, right? So I, I kind of refer to these things as great problems to have, uh, but, but nevertheless, uh, you know, can create a problem when you, when you have uh, quite a bit of product going through that space. And for us, we also didn't have the lab online originally, so we had cannabis coming down, not enough drying space, and our lab was not f uh, fully licensed in, uh, at capacity. So all these things, we, you know, presented unique challenges, but uh, again, things that we were easily able to fix, and well, now that we get our additional manufacturing space online, we'll just continue to roll out brands quarter over quarter. So do you think those results will be the result of all the harvest? I'm not sure I'm... 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, again, just to be clear, it's a weekly harvest at Flower One. So we're pulling down three to 5,000 pounds every week, and the flower continues to get better and better and better. You know, since I even joined, we've, we've been able to insert incredible genetics. We're bringing on brands that bring genetics with them. And so I believe we'll have the best genetics in the world in that facility before the end of the year, coming from probably three or four of the, of the best brands that happen to control or partner with those genetics companies and sources. So, you know, we're, we're working really, really hard on that, and I think we're, we're getting real close. Sure. Yeah, and, and, you know, look, with, with all uh, competition, I guess, comes winners and losers. Um, but ultimately, it goes back to trust. It goes back to the ability to deliver. You know, if you look at California and the supply chain, you've got people, again, having to utilize up to 20 people on a, on a given brand's procurement team to buy flour from hundreds of sources. Oftentimes, they're getting flour that was different than what they agreed to purchase, the quality levels all over the place, the availability is all over the place, and oftentimes when it comes to cannabis of a certain potency, they're unable to source anything at a, at a fair price point for, for cannabis at, uh, that is, you know, uh, at an attractive potency from a THC perspective. So the ability to service both brands and retailers in the state is really important, and I think, you know, we due to our cost of production and our capabilities on the manufacturing side, have a very, very valuable you know, proposition for brands and retailers in the state. Um, Absolutely. And, and our goal is that for every brand partner we take on, as, as good as it is to sell out, we never want to sell out. Our goal is that there is never a retailer that is short a supply. Uh, we plan to take on brands and roll them out and roll them into their full capacity so that, again, they can go out and do what they do best and customers are not forced to you know, ask questions like they did with Plus relative to why is your product only in the store half of the time. Um, and I think that's the, the real challenges with the supply chain in California today. Uh, is that there isn't the consistency, and the brands and the retailers can't rely on on stable production. Saves them the headaches, correct. It saves them the headaches. It also gives them, again, an ability to capture margin that they're not likely capturing today because we can reduce the cost of the biomass and the input considerably. And we can turn that around to our brand partners and share that value with our brand partners who then are able to you know, build sustainable business models, which we think is, is really important for, for everybody in the space. Sure. Um, we do it ourselves, but I do believe that we're, we're emerging as a real hybrid because we do rely on the brands themselves to come in and, of course, provide SOPs, training, uh, and whatever information is needed to get our team on the ground up to speed and bringing their products to life. So uh, it's a little bit of a hybrid. You know, we have the support of the brands, and we have the support of the brands primarily because we're not competing with the brands. So in a lot of cases, white label providers in like a state like California will, will offer their services to brands, but will at the same time offer two or three competing products to, that, to those SKUs. And I think that creates a conflict of interest, and especially when it comes to the distribution, you're seeing those brands squabble and, and argue over, over who's being preferred and getting priority treatment. So for us, uh, you know, because we're not competing with those brands, we, we think we offer a service to them and, and can work alongside them in a, in a way that's unique. Sure. Yep. We do. 
Um, and, and that's because of the fact that we're, again, not trying to bring brands to market. Um, we do have some house brands that were there through the acquisition that we made of NLVO. Um, but for the most part, and again, uh, all of our strategy moving forward would not be to launch those house brands, um, but to utilize partnerships like GPEN and to offer their services. And having, by having their filling machines uh, and, and that relationship, we're able to offer their cartridges and filling to all of our brand partners. And, and we will be de, you know, device uh, or hardware agnostic as well. So we'll likely be filling for a variety of filling partners over time based on the brands that come to us and based on the hardware that they want us to fill. Sure. Yeah, so we're, we're still in the works of, of, of perfecting this aspect of our organization because as you, as you can imagine, the successful brands also want to have boots on the ground in the market. And whether that be through a sales effort or their so-called brand ambassadors, it presents a unique challenge. Now, I look at it as an opportunity because we have an incredible amount of human resources chasing the same goal. Uh, the key is to figure out how to align those parties and get them working together. I think we can learn a lot from the alcohol business and partners like Southern Wine and Spirits who are, uh, you know, potentially uh, looking at coming into the space in the near future. Um, I think we can learn a lot from how they interact with alcohol companies, how their reps are able to, you know, effectively work on multiple touch points uh, alongside the, 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 the company's reps uh, and, and working together to maximize the value of those accounts. Um, but we still need to build that program and set it up in a way uh, that, that, again, utilizes the, the teams from the brands as well as our team on the ground at Flower One. I think, oh, one more, and that's... I just wanted to kind of ask you about your real estate. Sure. Yours is a company, obviously, right? It's Brian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the good point, right? There's some confusion around that and because we did a, a sale lease back with Treehouse and um, people had asked us if we had sold the greenhouse for $20 million, which was, uh, of course, not the case. The, the, the site that we did the sale lease back for with Treehouse was for our state-of-the-art commercial kitchen. So that was the former indoor cultivation space that belonged to NLVO that we've now converted into our state-of-the-art commercial kitchen. Uh, or, or, or converting, I should say. Sure. Yeah, and, and that's the beauty of having partners like Brian and Treehouse, and is that um, they provide us with an, an access to non-dilutive capital and ability to expand without having to raise additional debt and equity uh, as well. So that's that's an exciting optionality for us. Uh, we also have. Uh, the ability as, as our internally to purchase real estate and make sure that uh, you know our company's set up in a good position to actually go to Treehouse with the right the right opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you guys.